Welcome to What Would a Damn Sophie Your Pilot into the Universe of Chinese, and welcome to October. This month, I plan to focus on food because for Chinese food, it's a big deal. We didn't solve the hunger problem <laughs> with such a big population over there only a, until like a few decades ago. So, food security has been a big deal, and that reflect. In this expression, it says "min yi shi wei tian." This is the ultimate summary of what food is to people over there. People regard food as their sky; like they are as important to the to their survival as if it's their sky. So it's all encompassing, all determining、uh, factor for people to stay. I guess it's a survival instinct over there, right? So people cannot. Okay, so when we use tian wei tian, we compare anything ultimate important to us always to the sky level.、Um, so in English, we like to like the sky is the limit, right? So similar similar sense, Chinese view sky as the upper bound of whatever you can achieve. In this case, is Upper bound of whatever that is important to you. So here is people prioritize food as the ultimate, like the upper bound. <laughs> Dial up all the way to the max. So okay, Min. Look at this character. It kind of looks similar to the simplified Chinese, right? So, so it almost like it didn't give me much of a clue of what exactly that is. Until I look at these older renderings, because these characters are taken from a dictionary about two thousand years ago, and these are cropped out from various, I guess, hard surface or long surviving, <laughs> time beating、um, material that carried ancient、uh, characters in their earlier renderings. That is like three or four thousand years ago. And you can see the progression here. Things get more and more abstract, right? So at the beginning, this is an eyeball. Like who would imagine this actually came from an eyeball shape? Until it got abstracted into this curves that we don't know what that is. But the eyeball was this thing <laughs> under it. Well. I have to put two and two together because "min" in Chinese actually means、um, almost like people. Not in today's sense. Actually, it's the people who is being governed by one ruler, and they can be governed like so many of people in comparison to ruler, right? Just by the quantity. Like, how can one ruler rule so many? So such a big population back then, right? And especially like a population, probably they speak their own dialect or have their own like why they pay tax to you, <laughs> so to speak, right? So back then, this mean actually means people who are whose eyes are kind of covered. In this case, it's almost like cross out, and eyes represent knowledge, understanding. You can really see things as is, and so people who cannot see things, almost like blinded people, those are the people who can be governed easier. So I mean, twenty twenty four, we probably can still relate to that somehow. That people, even if we are voters、uh, out here,、um, how many of us really can see with our eyes of things? Clearly,、um, so I guess since ancient times, the ruler has been trying to cover people's eyes so that it's easier for them to rule, and this character simply reflect that cross of the eyeball. Okay, so it's it's totally against the value of today, but somehow it's even relatable today. No political <laughs> commentary, but that that has been shown on this Chinese character, and that's me. E, this squiggly thing. 
um, most of our understanding of Chinese characters are, you know, straight lines, sometimes a little bit boxy, but this kind of going, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six. Take six turns in one stroke. That's not easily seen in today's Chinese. And in fact, you can see this contemporary Chinese rendering versus this is like totally unrecognizable. This is easier to render just one stroke without thinking much. <laughs> you don't really take much turns in your rendering. You just need to remember your strokes, how they piece together. But here is many, many turns. And that is capturing the imagery of the ancient scoop or ladle that you use for eating. So again, this is related to food. And this food utensil eventually means utensil for anything. Eventually means you use that thing. It, it has a utility. Um, okay, so this utility eventually gets uh, even more abstract. Like you, people take food, right? I translate take food to conform to the current English habitual way of understanding or putting things together. But even if I translate this take, it means people use or regard uh, because that's the essential tool for them to survive, right? They have to eat with this scoop or ladle. So that's yi shi. We have another type of scoop here. So this is another scoop rendering, like a shuffle. And then this um, circle with horizontal line with a little bit tip on the top, the whole thing, right? It has to be with a tip. Without the tip, it looks like the sun symbol. With the tip, that is the grain symbol. So this, I guess the sun and the grain, you can see the sun through a grain <laughs> of rice um, because it simply capture the energy from the sun. That's why we're eating that. That's our tiny energy capsule that captured the sun energy and then we're taking that to use our food energy right so this um this actually probably intentionally this is my guesswork okay intentionally related to the sun um because it's the same thing just different form um okay so this brain symbol together with this scooping or sho shoveling in similar way but simplified you can see that means uh, that that pronounced as a xiang and means the frequency of food. Frequency of food together with this triangle thing, which is just like this, and with one horizontal line at the bottom, it's not a perfect triangle in a geometry sense of the perfect triangle. But in Chinese, that's triangle enough to mean it's gathering. Uh, it's pronounced as ji. In today's in, uh, Chinese, we don't see this character on its own anymore. But it's a, it's a component that we see across different concepts making so, or meaning making. So this gathering of fragrance of food together means food. For one, you can regard it as Dining experience in ancient times probably means the gathering moment for the family. I mean, today in our household, probably the same practice, right? So dining time is family gathering time. So this gathering of frequency of food makes sense. It means people gathering around the frequency of food. And the second understanding is once you gather enough of food and then you start to, to eat them. In any case, this gathering and the fragrance of food made today's um, character. Shi. shi can mean food, it can also mean eating food. So it's just like the English we have. Well, in English we have eat and eatery. Uh, we don't really use a food as an action word, right? We don't say we food something. Uh, but in Chinese we can say um, shi, we can use the shi both as a noun and as a verb and distinguish it only contextually. Okay, wei, again, it's related to food. It, it relates to produce food. It's a farming activity 
specifically plowing. So here on the top of the frame is a three hand, three finger hand symbol, means somebody else, actually not your hand, your hand will be three finger hand symbol from the bottom of the screen. You have to first person perspective do that. And this is a, from your view, this is somebody else's hand and is holding this complicated tool that I don't exactly know how it looks, but the result is this five lines once the plow goes through the soil. And I guess plowing was a labor intensive thing. And ancient times that was regarded as one of the uh, essential activities in farming. And eventually this farming action word becomes the, the ultimate action word in Chinese, kind of a comparable to English, do, D-O. And we just say wei, and in fact, we talked about a wu wei before, and you have probably heard this Chinese pronunciation. Wu wei means do nothing, <laughs> right? Uh, it's the posture to take when you are facing a complicated problem. Instead of jumping in, take a you know a blind guess of which direction it's going to be. Instead, you step back without doing anything and see how things are going to evolve without your intervention. Okay. So way is the, the do, and because it is do, we eventually turn that into a, what do you call it? <laughs> I translate it as as, um, I guess we can, we can, in this case, as means conceptually understand something as if it's something else. Okay, so shi food as sky, these are two very different things. And so this as, as a connection word, is kind of comparable one as b. And the way this action word is, like what sky do to you is com comparable to what food do to you. So this do, this as, even if I translate it as connection word as as, but it actually means this do, this action, there so this food action act as sky okay i guess that's a better connection sky is this one horizontal line. so in the frame of this two-dimensional frame that chinese try to capture everything sky is the upper of the frame it makes sense right it's visually upper of the frame and we have this big concept which is two p's exactly have to be in this way, connected by one horizontal, right? So that's a binder. So um, talked about this many times. So we have big and small, they are opposite. Opposite meaning, and the way they make meaning is this in a similar fashion, because big or small is relative term. And eventually we get rid of the relative. We thought about it in absolute term. Big means bigger, and this bigger was created by these two parts connected, a bind by one curve line over there. I mean, curve line is a stylized thing. You can just write horizontal. Um, but that, like contemporary, right? It's just horizontal. So that means you have two things put together, two times something, and versus xiao is this, this thing has to be separated and you have a vertical line to make sure the, these two, two things doesn't touch. It means you cut something in half. So two, two times something is making sure this new something is two times bigger than the original individual things. So that's how Chinese, even if it's only two, 2D frame, and it's a freeze frame. They cannot like put a little GIF uh, file there to create a little video to illustrate a pretty abstract concept. But with this frame and have this kind of abstract combination thing of two times something paired it together with the small concept, then I kind of figure, all right, that's, that's the logic behind the big and small. So big sky, I mean, big, this one horizontal line is the upper bound, right? This big one thing, you can regard it. Uh, by the way, you know, sky, one thing is Chinese concept of one. One for Chinese is the same as the sky. <laughs> um, two is the earth. So that's kind of a philosophical attachment to the, the characters. You know, scholars have to interpret things in a certain way. 
and um, the sky is the origin, is the beginning of things, is first comes the sky. Okay, anyways, so this one slash sky, same thing in Chinese concept, and a big, so it's that one big thing out there that is our sky. People take food as sky. It's Chinese way to say, for people, food, do to them as if sky do to them. That's their ultimate survival environmental thing. If sky, you, you, sky is unedible for sure, but that's where everything happens. That's, that's condition. That's the ultimate condition that you're dependent on for survival. You, you have to live under the sky. Um, and food is as essential to human survival as if it's sky. Okay, so <laughs> similar, not exactly similar, but uh, English version of the spin, uh, of course, I mean, it's <laughs> sexier to compare it to sex, but it, it shows that food, what food does to people as if as enchanting as what sex does to people because you just want more out of it, which is probably not true because, right? Eating the right amount is good for you. Overeating is definitely a killing, <laughs> a slow kill for yourself. So this expression, I have to put a condition over there. It's just an expression to show you that food have this magic to, to want, make you want more of it. So in English and in Chinese, we have this food priority or this food attraction or this food desire um, that um, express in dif different ways. So there you go. 民以食为天. Thank you for your time. See you another day.